So my story is that I went ahead and go for a low-cost airline instead of trying to apply or continuing my application with the flag carrier PAL. Hi, I'm Ruth and welcome to my channel. Here, I help aspirants to simplify the complicated cabin crew interviews. I make weekly videos on flight attendant interview tips and if you are searching for answers about this topic right now or currently employed and wondering how to shift your career into a flight attendant or cabin crew type of career, you are on the right channel so make sure you hit on subscribe for weekly tips about this topic. Speaking of, we do usually give tips on this channel, but on today's video, I feel like we have lots of newcomers on this channel. Hello, hello, new subscribers. I feel like we've grown so much and there's a lot of new faces who I haven't met before. So I would like to share a little bit about my story, why I did the things that I did, what were my decisions into going through this flight attendant journey, and what I wish I knew and what I wish somebody was helping me out. I wish there was somebody helping me out. That was the topic on the last video, right? So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it. But on today's video, I'm going to share with you the reasons why I did what I did and what were happening behind the scenes of my life as I was going through the flight attendant journey. I know this is a big sigh because it's the first time I'm going to share my full story on this channel. I'm gonna be vulnerable with you guys. So here it is. You know what? I really wish that the reason that I wanted to be a flight attendant is because I love flying, I love to travel, and this is my dream career. But guys, wasn't. I'm so sorry to disappoint most of you. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. My first application for a flight attendant position was when I was 19 years old. I was still a student and before the requirements were only 18 years old to apply. Right now it's 21, just so you know, but before it was 18, so that's how old I was. So I really was half-hearted when I was applying for this position because it was just like somebody told me, Hey, Qatar Airways is in Marriott, go ahead and check it. We're basically neighbors with Marriott, so just go ahead and check it out. Opportunity. So I went. By that time, you know, when I was still 19 years old, I have no idea of what the cabin crew career was at all. All I have is the common knowledge of common folks about being a flight attendant. My notion is that you have to be gorgeous, you get to travel for free, you earn lots of money, and things like that. Ha ha ha. I have no idea what it is like living in the Middle East, or what is it like doing customer service, or what is the career all about. Really no idea at all. So I went to my first try and I got in. I was invited for the second day of up Applications. It's honestly an ego boost because you know what? I was lining up for hours on end on that hotel and I saw how many people at least at least 300 people was there waiting for the chance to be interviewed and we were lining up until the very outer part of the hotel. So can you imagine from the ballroom going outside, outside, outside the hotel, even in the streets, it's so long the line. So on the second day, there were only 50 candidates who were invited to participate, to continue on for the running, to be the next Qatar Airways cabin crew. <laughs> So I was so happy that I was invited, but I didn't get the job right there and then on my first try. So I am sad, but I'm still psyched and I'm still happy that I was given the chance to go for the second day. So I went on with my life and by the way, if you are interested about Qatar Airways, I have their latest recruitment process on this vlog. I have interviewed a new friend of mine who recently joined Qatar Airways and she shared all the tea guys on what happened on their recruitment process. It was now just one day process. That The olden days that was three day process. Now it was just one day for her. And she got in and she is already going to Qatar yesterday. So right now she already landed. I feel so conflicted at that time because I wasn't really ready. 
to get the job as a fire tender. So I was actually in reality in a relationship with this. It was a toxic relationship, guys. And if you know, you know, you know. <laughs> it had been like that. I was like, I just don't want to leave the country, but I want to be a flight attendant. I want to be with my love life. You know, all those things are going on in my head. So I can't really concentrate on the cabin crew interview that is happening at the time. I've also mentioned that in my book over there, I have a book. Looking back, I, I realized I was experiencing what I call in the book an emotional block at the time. Like, my brain is ready to go, but my heart is not. Something like that, you yeah. know. So, it's in the, under the emotional preparation right here. So, if you haven't checked out my book, check it out. It's on Shopee and on my website. Now available for shipping worldwide. So, let me just put this back. All right, so I was about 23 years old when I realized I now seriously want to apply for this position. So what's the difference? What happened is I graduated, I started working for a call center, and then I realized a call center job is not for me. I'm too ADHD for this. I can't stay at a desk job. I can't do it consistently. I mean, I lasted for a year. And then uh, six months on the first one. But then the swing in shifts, the consistency, and like the monotony of the job is just not for me, guys. I really tried. I really tried my hardest. Aside from that going on, I also have family drama going on happening at a time. So I really wanted to escape. I was very desperate to get away. Even though I have a relationship at that time, it's like there are more factors weighing in your mean the best solution if I get hired then there's no conflict I will just say oh I get hired so then I have to leave I started reading forums and blogs and getting my hands into any information on the internet and on the word of love people I know about the cabin crew career I learned a lot on how to pass the interview from tips that happened in real life, you know, from tips of these people who actually applied and shared their experiences on the forums. They don't even have a blog. Forums, okay? If you know what a forum is, it's like, it's so old school. It's the early days of the internet. It's like this website that there's a topic and everybody just chimes in on that topic and the comment stays forever. I think it's still there until now. I'm not so sure. It's like a cabin crew wannabes. That's the keyword of that forum if I try to find. So I was a cabin crew wannabe. There, I realized that the cabin career was really hard and then I realized it was really hard to pass the interviews and I was so lucky I was at the second day I kind of know that but not to this extent <laughs> So somehow, I think I leveled up my point of view of what the cabin crew career was, what it really was. Like, there was customer service involved, there was a lot of life-changing decisions, so impacting your life once you join the cabin crew team. So I realized, it's not easy to work. I realized the job is not as easy as I thought it was. I thought it was before I just have to be gorgeous, and then the kid kids, trolley trolleys, and then <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was a real job. And I felt like I felt there is more respect for the cabin crew career at this time. So I can then finally see myself walking the path and can see that this is something that I can do as a career, not just something that I do in between before I become a nurse in the USA or something like that. No, I can really see that if ever this turns out to be good, I could just stay there and have a good life and, you know, have a good career, a very rewarding career at that. So I have decided finally, I think that's a step two on the eight steps uh, because on that book i talked about the eight steps of getting your dream job as a flight attendant so that's the step to the deciding point i finally decided i'm gonna walk the path i'm gonna get this career i'm gonna get into this career so i applied to again qatar airways and then i didn't get it i was so sad so there was a wave of local hiring. It always happens whenever an international airline goes to the Philippines, lots of current cabin crew resigns 
and go for the international. So Cebu Pacific was hiring, Air Asia was hiring, PAL is hiring, Air Phil Express is hiring. I applied to all of them, guys. I applied all at once. I wasn't swayed by the rejections because I got rejected in all of them, except, except for Air Phil Express. And for PAL, I was under waiting status for final interview because the local airlines, they don't do the day one, day two, day three. They do like, okay, day one, and then maybe they will call you after one month for the step two, and then after seven months for step three. So it really depends if they have a schedule for new batch of trainings. If you have reached this part of the video, we have covered so far my journey until to the point that I was choosing between Airfield Express and PAL. Stick until the end where I share with you the drama that is happening behind the scenes while I was waiting or while I was trying to pursue this career. If my content has been helpful to you and your cabin crew journey, please let me know by liking this video or leaving a comment on the comment box below. And if you are listening over the podcast, I'd appreciate a review and a like on the Facebook page if you're watching this on Facebook. That really helps me out a lot and it enables me to create more free content on this channel. Continuing on with the story guys, so I made a rush decision to which airline to choose. I just feel like I needed to get out. So a little context so that you could understand me. What happened is Airfield Express finally said that yes, we accept you. PAL is still waiting. So I don't know when is the next interview is going to be. And they said we have to go to Manila to do the panel or the final panel interview, the last step of the process before medicals, of course. So I was kind of like, I just need to get out of here. So I accepted Airfield Express. <laughs> Continuing with the story, this is where I'm coming from. I grew up without any parents. I mean none. One of my parents died due to an accident and the other parent was absentee all my life. I grew up from the kindness and the generosity of my relatives who took me in as their own and I would usually go from one relative to another to another to another as my life went on. So that was what was happening because the surviving parent that I have cannot be a consistent person in my life. So he's not being capable of consistent life for a small child or any child at that matter, period. So my parents sadly was a narcissist, in my opinion. Not the selfie-taking kind of narcissist, but the <laughs> energy vampire clinical definition of NPD or narcissistic personality disorder type. Basically someone who complains about everything and anything at all, doesn't take responsibility for their life, they love drama, and they want to control people around them, especially the ones that are their kin, and they love to see the people they love suffer <laughs> as long as they feel like they have narcissistic supply from that person. They love to gaslight, they play the victim, and abuse everyone around them psychologically, financially, and emotionally. It was so toxic because the moment I graduated from college and started earning my keep, he suddenly <laughs> arrived at our doorstep with his third wife and their blended children in tow. I have nothing against the wife and the children. I love them to death. It's just my parent. And then this parent demanded, take no not ask nicely but demanded that I move away from my relatives home which is rent free and I start to get them an apartment and basically provide for all of the family and it was so weird and it's so stressful at the same time so I moved out and that relatives room and got an apartment it paid all the bills and then if I argue or say anything to this parent uh, uh, this parent will just tell me either you pay for all of this or you pay a hundred thousand pesos for me giving you life and then you can go do whatever you want. This parent is a bully and loves to shout, shame, and even terrorize me in my place of work at the call center at the time. Would shame me in front of my other co-workers. He is like a stalker which is weird because we live in the same home. 
and he would parade my ID to other people there and do you recognize this woman? Do you recognize this is my child? Something like that. Oh my god, the shame, <laughs> the embarrassment and everything. So he does that every time that he feels like if he do that, I would give him more money aside from what I'm already providing for in the home so it was so so weird and all the other times this parent is actually drowning in alcohol so it's either drowning in alcohol terrorizing other relatives or terrorizing me that's the cycle and i felt like this is not okay i was being tortured psychologically financially and emotionally and i feel like i'm being forced to get an apartment get an internet account get a loan because they need to start their own business something like that and this time i said to myself this is not okay and i need to do something if i say i am getting out of this situation i'm gonna move out it's a lot of drama and a lot of fight that will go on if but if i said i thought to myself what if i say i'm getting another job and i will move out because of the job then it will be less drama less friction and seriously i feel like if i confront this person i felt like my life is in danger so <laughs> that's how i felt it was that toxic and i felt unsafe in my own home and i feel like if i don't agree to whatever this parent is asking me to do i feel like they would kill their own kid so i'm fearing for my life <laughs> and so the moment i received the offer from airfield express i packed my bags i left I said goodbye to my siblings and I never looked back. I'm kidding. <laughs> I left, but still, because of the culture here in the Philippines, I sent almost all of my paycheck back home. And when I do that, I get reprimanded because my paycheck was not enough. It's not as big as what I was earning in a call center. So the money was not enough but i moved out <laughs> i was feeling like oh well this is just the life of an adult child of a narcissist hence the reason that is the reason why i was so desperate to become a flight attendant oh how i wish oh the lord how i wish that it was because this is my dream job i love to travel something like that <laughs> But it wasn't. It's a desperate move to save my life and my sanity. So this is my story. I'm not bitter about it anymore. I was bitter before. I was shamed. I fully accepted my story, how my life played out. And now I'm even in good terms with this parent. Actually, from a distance, it's called the gray rock method. <laughs> you love them still, but from a distance. And I just feel like this is the cards or the hand that life has dealt with me and then i'll just have to deal with it so i fully accepted where i come from what's my story and there's no more shame no more hiding i fully own my story and this is what led me to this path and because of that i am truly grateful especially for the flight attendant career or this flight attendant job that i got because i was given this opportunity i was able to escape a toxic home life situation and probably even saved my life <laughs> after that i went through a healing journey to get to where i am today and that is why i was able to tell you the story today but that story is that, you know that journey is for another story time in another video in the comments down below please share the reason why you wanted to become a flight attendant let me know i'm really curious and next monday i will be doing a q a for those of you who answered my recent ig story question post if you haven't followed me on instagram do follow me i post lots of reels as well as in tiktok so my handle is just at Miss K Chris, the same as this channel. Next Monday, I'll be collecting all the questions that I got from that story. And you could still post your question on the comment section below. And I will try, I will try to insert recent questions on the next video on Monday. I will see you there. In the meantime, I would recommend for you to check out my video. It's a commentary vlog on what I think is the best airline to work for, where I shared my opinion 
in the point of view of a cabin crew when it comes to perks, benefits, which is the best airline for me to work for if I were to apply today. So it will be on the screen right now, right here. Click on that and I will fly with you. Here we come, come with me, there's a way. 